All right, what is up y'all? So before we get into the fishing action from today, I wanna to let y'all know that sometime during the video, I'm going to be announcing a cool little giveaway that's pretty neat, pretty fun, and you don't wanna miss out on it. So make sure you stay tuned so you can see how you can win it. Let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, what is up y'all? Good morning and welcome back. My name is Cameron. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. And if you're new here, hey, I hope y'all enjoy it. So today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of flounder fishing. It is currently like 6.30 in the morning. But to start off, every good fishing trip starts with getting bait, right? So we got a little cast net here. We're gonna throw it out, see if we can catch ourselves some finger mullet, something like that. And then we're just gonna throw them on a jig head and start dragging them around and seeing if we can pull up some big old flatties. Y'all stick with it, stay tuned. I see bait blowing up in here. Something's probably chasing it. So hopefully there's some fish. See if we can catch some first. I am no expert at throwing the cast net by any means. My recommendation to you guys, if you're beginners, if you're getting yourself a new cast net, you want to get into catching your own bait, get a small one. This is like a little four or five foot one. I also have, I believe a seven foot back of the house. That thing's too big, it's hard to throw, but these things are super easy. So what I like to do, obviously you wind up your string in your hand just like this. Takes me, there's a ton of bait in here right now, guys. Then we're gonna grab it. This is what pulls your net closed. Man, there's stuff getting blown up. I think there's gonna be some flounder in here. But this is what pulls your net closed. It pulls all the strings in there, closes your net. So we're just gonna take it, hold it like this, run our hand down just a little bit. You can run all the way down to here if you want, uh, so you can have more room to grab it so it's easier to throw. Or you can hold it all the way at the top. We're just gonna grab it about right here, just like this. Grab one, put it in our right hand, grab another. Open your net, and you're ready to throw. So now whenever we throw it, I like to give mine just a slight little twist, just like this. Throw. And we're gonna let go with this hand first and hold on with this one and let go of this hand last. Let's go ahead and throw out on this bait up in the shallow. As simple as that. Let it sink down, pull your strings, and there you go. We got some nice baits here. Those are perfect size finger mullet. Hey, we got we even got a little pinfish right there, but we're gonna go ahead and dump these on our bucket. And yeah, we just man, there's a whole school of finger mullet right here. Look at, oh, it's, what was that? Trout or ladyfish or something blowing up on him right here. But there you go. That's how you catch your own bait. It's super simple. And this just saved us, what, we got five baits in there that saved us about four or five bucks at the bait shop. Definitely worth it to invest in a cast net. These things are like 30, 40, 50 bucks. And yeah, you're gonna end up saving me a lot of money in the long run. Well, I threw the cast net over there, saw some bait jumping, and there's a little ribbon fish chasing him. So we caught this guy. What a crazy looking fish. Y'all check that out. There we go. Cool little cast net catch. We might actually save this thing for bait too. These make great bait. Ooh. But there we go. Let's see if we can throw the cast net one more time, try to catch some more bait. We have about, maybe about 10 or 12 mullet. I see a huge school coming out right now. If we can cast net these, then we should be done. Look at them in the water. Oh, oh. That got a little tangled, but I think I got them. There we go. We got two or three more. That should be good. So we got ourselves some finger mullet right here. That's what we were catching the cast net. These are my favorite flounder bait. Little finger mullet, just like this. And all we're gonna do is just take a one fourth ounce jig head. We have a little bit of leader line right here. 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. One fourth ounce jig head. You can use one eighth, you can use three eighths, you can use half, depending on the water depth, the wind, the current, all that good stuff. Pretty calm in here. The wind's blowing from our back, so one fourth is just fine. Then we're going to take our finger mullet. We're just gonna hook it up just like this. We're gonna go through the top of the mouth up to the top of the head. Not too far in, just enough so it doesn't come off. Look at that, a nice live bait. And then all we do, super simple for flounder guys. One of the easiest fish to fish for, as long as you can find them. If you can find them, they're pretty easy to catch. So we're just gonna throw this finger mullet out, let it sink down, and then just slowly drag it back like this. And we're just waiting to feel a thump. And once we feel a thump, or once we feel our line get pretty heavy, and we think that we have a flounder on there, we're just gonna sit here, let him eat for 10 seconds or so, let him swallow that bait, and set the hook hard. So we fished around this little flounder hole for maybe about 30 minutes. And we're not really catching much. We haven't even had a bite yet. Tons of seaweed in here. So I think what we're gonna do, is we're gonna move on to another spot. We don't wanna waste this nice morning tide. Uh, if the fish were here, they'd be biting. So let's go ahead and move on to a new spot. And we'll see y'all over there and we're gonna keep on trying to catch some flounder today. Let's go. We just made our way to spot number two. Just got out here next to the water and we're about to start fishing, but 
I may be throwing a popping cork at this spot, mainly because there's a lot of current right now, a lot of tide movement, and there's no way I'm gonna be able to get that mold on bottom. So we got a little popping cork here, got some leader line, and I'm running it pretty deep. The reason I'm doing this is because I know this spot pretty well, and I know that the flounder like to sit up on the little ledge that this uh, current running through here creates. So I'm fishing it pretty deep so I can get on the bottom with this shrimp. Now, if it's out in the middle, yeah, we can still catch a trout and stuff like that because there are a lot of trout here. But once it starts coming close to the edge, it's deep enough that it'll start to drag the bottom in and tie those flounder bites. So there we go. We got our shrimp hooked up. Let's toss out and see what we can get into. Well, we switched over to the popping cord. I've seen a couple of flounder literally come skyrocketing out of the water airborne back behind us closer to the marsh. And there we go. We just caught a little guy. So that's cool. That means there's some flounder in here. We're going to go ahead and get this kind of hooked. Obviously, he's not big enough to keep. It's just a little, like, eight or nine incher. They got to be 15 inches. So we'll get him one hook, toss him back, and then put on another shrimp and try again. Pretty cool. First flounder of the day. First fish of the day. Cut the skunk off. Now it's time to catch him. Hey, that was about two casts after that flounder. That's pretty cool. Cracking right, away, species number two of the day. There's a little speckled trout. Once again, not a keeper fish. You wanna get your hands wet before you touch these guys. Don't wanna knock that slime off of them. These things have to be 15 inches in Texas. They have a slot of 15 to 25, and that is, once again, like a 10 inch fish. We'll go ahead and let them go. Pretty looking fish though. Hopefully we'll catch his bigger brother here in a second, but I wanna show you all the setup that I'm using. So like I said, I have a popping cork right here. We have about three and a half, four feet of 20 pound four carbon liter. Coming down to a split shot. I actually had two split shots on here. I guess the other one fell off. And then I have just a little live bait hook. Now, if you ask me what hook to use with a popping cork, I would never tell you this one. I would tell you like a little number eight treble hook or something like that. That's typically what we use, but I didn't have any. I couldn't find any treble hooks in my bag. I didn't feel like searching. These were the first things that popped up on top of the bag when I took a look. So this is what I tied on and it seems to be working pretty well. I've caught three fish, missed maybe one bite. So yeah, there we go. But we're gonna grab another shrimp. I'm gonna show you how to hook it up real quick. So we have our live shrimp right here. Now, if you look in the head, you can see a black dot right there. And there's another little dark area up there. You don't wanna hook the shrimp in that part. That is a brain that'll kill it. So what you do is you hook it in between them or you can hook it farther up in the horn. Like right, sorry, right there. Obviously when you have a bigger hook, it's gonna be hard to hook it way up in the horn. So you probably just wanna to stick to the middle of the head, but. That's perfect. That's a nice live shrimp ready to go out. Let's go ahead and sling him out here. Give it a couple pops to see if it gets pulled under. All right, guys. It is later in the morning now. It's about 11 a.m. It's getting hot. The wind's picking up real bad. We just took a break, went and got a little snack. I got these bacon mac and cheese sunflower seeds. Never even saw this flavor, so I had to try them out. You know how it is. So if y'all see me spitting in the video, I'm not dipping. I always see that comment down below when I'm eating sunflower seeds. It's not Copenhagen. It's David's. So yeah, we just pulled back up to the second spot where we caught that flounder, that trout, the little drum. Tide's still coming in. We're gonna get back out there, see if we can catch something. Bite is really slow today. It's been bad for quite a while now. The southwest wind is just killing everything. In the Galveston Bay area, west is worst, is the saying around here. And it's pretty true. I mean, fishing has been pretty terrible. Also probably because it's been like 103 degrees every single day. But yeah, we're gonna grab the shrimp. We're gonna head back over there and we're gonna see if we can't hook into something good. Maybe we'll catch a keeper flounder, who knows? That's really the goal for today, catch a keeper flounder, but I'll take anything at this point. So y'all stick with this, stay tuned. Let's hop out of the car, head over there and tie on a live bait and see what happens. Okay, we're about to start fishing, but I do want to apologize for the wind noise, guys. It's getting pretty windy. We are trying our best to block the microphone from the wind. Unfortunately, that's just how it is down here on the coast, especially when it's blowing 15 all day sustained. Let's go ahead and cast a line out though. Well, we're hooked up on a finger mullet on a Carolina rig. What is that? It looks like a nice flounder. I had taken my mullet and I killed it. And I hooked it upside down. This is a nice flounder. Wow, that's a keeper. What the heck y'all? 
I literally took my mullet, spun my mullet around upside down, ripped the head off, and I was throwing it by the tail, just completely dead, no head or anything, and just bouncing along. And this flounder just ate it like crazy. I thought that was gonna be a redfish. I'm kind of in shock. We always try to get the most fresh, live, just best finger mold we can get for flounder, and this thing just ate a dead one being pulled backwards that was out there for like 20 minutes already. It looks like trash. And that is a nice keeper flounder. So there we go. We're gonna go ahead and take that guy out on the stringer. And hey, God is good. We just said that was the plan for today. And look, we're rewarded and we got one. So pretty cool. I'm happy with that. That's not fish. What is that? Look. Guys, we have found so much stuff today. It's unbelievable. Y'all check this out. I just snagged this big old trap or big old drop net on the bottom, either crab trap or drop net. So, hey, it's always good to get stuff out of the water. And plus, now we have all this cool free stuff that we found today. Throw this one up on the bank, take that one home too. Free net. So we've tried every trick in the book today. We've done the jig head, we've put popping corks on, and then we've done Carolina rigs. Well, now I'm switching over to free lining with a little split shot to hold it down. It is a little windy, so I think it's gonna be kind of tricky, but we're gonna try to free line one of these mullets out here. While I'm finishing tying this up, I figured it was a great time to remind y'all about these Waterland sunglasses right here. If you're shopping around looking for a new pair of sunglasses, I highly recommend checking these out. They're pretty nice. I like them a lot. They're super comfortable and they do their job great. I never realized how important sunglasses were until I started wearing these. I would never wear them at all. Um, I would go home, my eyes would be sunburned, I'd be squinting all day, I'd walk in the house, everything would be pitch black, I couldn't see anything because I'd been out in the sun. But luckily, they hooked me up with a pair of these and I'm super happy they did because I will never be out here without sunglasses again. If you want to check them out and get a pair for yourself, I will have the website linked in the description down below, but it is waterlinkco.com and you can use my code BEFORE to get 15% off at checkout. So make sure you do that, definitely check these things out, and yeah, let's go ahead and get right back into the fishing. So I got myself a finger mole right here. When freelining mullet, I like to hook them from the tail just like this. Boom. That's going to keep them swimming real good, swimming away from us. And hopefully right into a fish's mouth. We're going to go ahead and toss this guy out. Leave the bail open so if we get a bite, we can allow that fish to completely swallow the bait before setting the hook. And hopefully we'll look into something. This is great for trout, redfish, and flounder too. So we'll see what bites. We're hooked up on the free line right here. I think we may have just caught the smallest flounder I've ever seen. Look at that little guy, pretty crazy. Now I will say, if you're gonna freeline, you might wanna use a smaller split shot if you're freelining finger mullet. This thing's kind of big and pulling the bait down on the ground. And maybe also cause my finger mullet are pretty small, but it worked, that's a fish. Well, surprise, surprise, we are back at the house right now. After catching that little flounder, the bite completely died out. The water got real dirty and the wind picked up too much. So we went ahead, headed home and uh, yeah. Now, typically, whenever I catch a fish like this, a nice keeper flounder, we would do a catch, clean, and cook for you guys. But this time is a little bit different. I'm not going to be cooking this flounder, mainly because my great grandma, who she's actually been on the channel before, like two or three years ago, way back in the beginning, we went out and did a crabbing video, made some crab bisque with her. She shared her recipe with all you guys. But my great grandma recently turned 100 years old, which is crazy. And she's always asking for flounder because she loves to make stuff flounder. So I'm going to be taking this guy, cleaning up for her, and then giving it over to her so she can do whatever she wants with it. But uh, y'all check this thing out real quick. It's pretty crazy. This guy got torn up by crabs. It looks like somebody took scissors and just cut all over it. But it was still alive. It was just sitting there swimming around. I went to go pull the stringer, and it was absolutely torn to pieces by crabs, which is just nuts. Anyways, though, I told you guys there was going to be a little giveaway announcement in this video, and here it is right now. So... I don't know about y'all, but every single time we go out fishing, we always find stuff that people leave. Uh, a lot of times it's just a bunch of crap. Most of the time it's just crap. But every once in a while you find some pretty cool stuff. Like today, we found this tackle box. So if this is one of y'all is watching, I'm sorry guys, but finders keepers, losers weepers, this is gonna be part of the giveaway. Because for this giveaway, we're going to be giving y'all all this stuff that we find. So over the next couple of weeks, over the next few trips that we take out fishing, we're just gonna be collecting everything we find. Sometimes we find packs of lures. Sometimes we find tackle box like this with all your terminal tackle in it. Sometimes, heck, sometimes we even find rods and reels. But as y'all know how it is, people just get lazy. They leave all their stuff everywhere. They don't care about picking it up. Just like a couple other finds we have today, which is this big old either pier net, drop net, or a crabbing net. But y'all check this thing out. 
pretty crazy. We got this. We also got a few little bobbers and stuff like that. And a lot of times we find really nice popping corks and really nice leaders that people just happen to get snagged and cut off. And then we catch them ourselves and accidentally snag their leaders. And there we go. We got some free spider weights, free leaders, all that good stuff. So like I said, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be going around picking up all this stuff. And we're going to be putting it all together in a tackle box, probably in this tackle box right here. Maybe we'll throw in a bigger one. And then after we get a bunch of stuff put together, I will announce how to win this giveaway. So make sure you stay tuned for the next few upcoming videos. It'll probably be like two or three weeks until we announce how to win it because we want to gather a bunch of stuff up for you guys. And like I said, a lot of it is crap. So whoever wins, you're probably going to get a bunch of junk. But, I mean, most of this stuff is usable. And who couldn't use some free fishing gear, right? And on top of that... I will be throwing in a little something extra, if you know what I mean. A little gift or something like that. So you definitely don't want to miss out on it. It's not all junk. With that being said, I thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. Leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you are, like always, guys, I thank you so very much. That's it for right now. And until next time, peace.